Hey everyone, it's Blake. Welcome in to episode number 82 of our WWE 2022 save in TW 2020. This is our state of WWE for January 2022. And yes, you heard me say WWE 2022 save because we have made it to 2022, our first official episode in the new year. Hope you guys enjoyed the new year, enjoyed your post Armageddon uh, celebration parties, which I know everyone had out there. Um, but uh, I really, I hope you enjoyed Armageddon. A lot of great feedback on that show. And uh, as I mentioned, that will be a show that kind of catapults us into the new year with a huge edition of Raw uh, on tap for our next episode. We'll get to that a little bit later. Let's talk about the state of WWE. This is going to be a big edition, probably our most anticipated edition yet, because we do have the year end awards. Um, and we just have a lot to get to because we got to look at the popularity ratings. We're going to look at what NXT is doing, uh, and also once we get to the awards in a little bit, we're going to finish up with the awards, so we're going to do that last. Um, I'm going to give you guys a chance to send in your own awards, because I'd love to know what you thought of our first six months uh, in this series, uh, and we'll talk about kind of some of the categories that I'll put uh, in the comments for you to kind of uh, make your own picks for um, your favorite, uh, you know, favorites for the first six months, so we'll, we'll talk about that a little later, but let's start. With things as they stand, um, looking at our size here, 80, you know, pretty much across the board. We got a couple 81s here in Northwest, Midwest. Um, we look at our progress. As we said, we had that dip there. Once we lost, um, you know, we kind of went down and the cooling off period and all that. But uh, we have started to make our way back up uh, to our highest point yet. So we hit that 80 mark here in terms of our size. Um, so that is, you know, we kind of expected to get there, and, um, you know, that's something that we just knew was going to happen eventually. It was just a matter of getting out of that cooling off period and all of that. Um, if we look at our creative and uh, where things stand on there, there's your top five. No big, you know, <laughs> no big changes there. That's your that's your top group. Unfortunately, our top star here has been retired. Um, he will not be wrestling again, so I'm going to stick to my storylines there. He's not making a return match. Um, next big thing, still Rhea Ripley. She has uh, pretty much been the only one there for a while. Our hot prospects, uh, those have kind of changed a little bit because Garza has actually joined the mix. Um, Dominic's there now. These two have entered, which is kind of fun because, as you know, we have a storyline going on that involves these two on Raw. Um, so Paige, you know, she's at the top of this list. We brought her back, and that's that's good to know. As I keep saying, you got to remember, Paige's only 29. And so um, bringing her back, she's got a, a good decade, hopefully, um, of, you know, being able to just be a star. So that's kind of uh, something there. Sonya's still there. Omos, we haven't seen Omos in a while. Will he return soon? We'll see. All right, talk to talk, all that. Here, here's what I find interesting. We look at uh, who's hot. Now, this is a group here. You know, Rollins is at the top, which, let's be honest, I, I think this is one where I'm like, all right, the game got this right because – it's hard to, you know, ignore that Rollins is probably not the guy with the most momentum in terms of the storylines involved in and all that. It's also hard to ignore that Owens, <laughs> who is still the U.S. champion, um, is right there, too. So he made that jump into this list. Brian's there. Of course, he's coming off the big win uh, in the triple threat match at Armageddon. Big E is still there, even though he loses in that match. It's good to know he stays in this spot, and then Drew McIntyre, also still there, um, which, you know, Drew's involved with the Bray Wyatt, Aleister Black stuff, but Drew's just, I mean, his overness we'll get to in a second. It's just, um, you know, it's just really, <laughs> there's a lot of overness when it comes to Drew. So now this section I just looked at, and I'm going to tell you, this is where I'm a little bit surprised because <laughs> it's no longer just the Miz in our who's not section. It is now Adam Cole and Christian, which I don't, I don't understand. I'm just going to be, maybe you guys have a better theory than I do, but like, I don't understand why Adam Cole is there. Um, he's been involved in all this Bullet Club stuff. They come off a huge pay-per-view main event win. Um, and when we look at the popularity, like he hasn't jumped like Balor has, but he still made a pretty, I think a pretty nice jump in terms of popularity. I don't remember off the top of my head. We'll look at it in a second, but I don't know why Adam Cole's here. That's, um... Yeah, I don't know. It's just, uh, obviously, you know, we look at kind of how it works when, but I, I just, I really don't know why he's in the spot. <laughs> I mean, Christian, poor Christian, <laughs> he finally makes his big, you know, return here. I've, I've had him on the roster for months, and he finally makes his return, and I guess just because he loses his first match. He has no momentum, so 
Um, yeah, so that's I guess, he's 0 1. I suppose that that really gets you into the spot, but I, I don't know. Uh, the Adam Cole one's the one that's kind of a mystery to me, but um, well, maybe there's something when we look at Adam Cole in the popularity ratings and stuff that we we find, but I, I just haven't seen it. I, I don't know why he's here. Poor Miz is still here though. I think that could change soon. So, uh, Miz has been here forever, but um, yeah, that's okay. All right, so that's that. Our hidden gems hasn't really changed throughout the entire save at this point. It's pretty much been the same five people uh, that have been sitting here, and you know we just haven't signed any of them. So uh, that is your creative section with um, Adam Cole, unfortunately, in the scenario of uh, you know just being in kind of a spot where he has no momentum, I guess, even though I think he has a lot of momentum. But uh, let's look at our titles. The WWE Champion, Still Edge, uh, 79 in terms of our prestige. That has, you know, I mean, it's fallen off one, but it's kind of stayed the same. But he's now your champ for 113 days. Uh, we got some long title reigns here. Uh, Keith Lee, 113 days, still your Intercontinental Champion. Prestige is actually, you know, continues to, to go in the right direction there. Raw Women's Champion Bailey, 68, still 113. I mean, let's be honest, SummerSlam was a big show. And so we had some, some title changes. This has not changed at all. Uh, Bianca, of course, 245. So Bianca has been our SmackDown Women's Champion since we started this save. Um, that has not changed at all. Prestige has gone up one. Uh, our tag team champions, Jeff Hardy and Ricochet, Enigma, um, you know, they are actually the, what is it, third team? Yeah, because the Usos held it, and then New Day held it. Now these guys have held it, um, and, you know, they've got a big match coming up at the Royal Rumble, which we'll talk about soon enough. Owens, 168 days now as our champion this was very early july week one so basically a month into our save he became the united states champion 15 successful title defenses so everybody up here that we've kind of you know i understand there haven't been a ton of title defenses for let's say a bailey people like that but um i mean owens has defended it 15 times and what else do you say 67 so this look at what this is happening i mean this gone for 63 67 easily our most increased value in terms of a championship um, so that's their uh, reigns 455 days still as the universal champion 16 successful title defenses throughout this um, so there you go uh, 83 for what reigns has done here this has pretty much stayed the same throughout our women's tag team championships um, also 113 days SummerSlam victory for them three successful title defenses um, you know, a 35, as we said, when we created this, I mean, look, it's going up. That's all we can do. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's, I don't know. We, we've got plans for the women's tag team division. It's just, this was a, a lower starting point as we know than all the other belts. So, um, you know, it, it just kind of is what it is on that. Um, all right, let's look at storylines wise, to be honest with you, I've got to, I've got to get some of these storylines updated. This is just one of those things where <laughs> sometimes I'm just like, all right, I need to get a show booked. I need to get a video out. And I don't update the storyline necessarily. When we look at some of our, our top storylines, the McIntyre, Wyatt, all that still going. You know, we've added kind of Priest to the mix here, Alistair Black involved. Um, you know, some of these others, like, you know, Chad Gable storyline of 48. Uh, the Garza one's still not there to a hot one. Owen's challenge, I mean, my goodness, how long has this storyline been going on now? Like forever. Uh, but as it's still considered hot, Rhea's still there. I mean, the Reigns one, let's be honest, there's there's nothing eclipsing that. With the 90, uh, everything that's going on there. And again, some of these others I just have not updated, and that's why some of these are going to be really low. The Rated RKO, or the Sammy Conspiracy Theory, Rated RKO Bullet Club, still hot. So that's just kind of a you know a look at that and uh, everything that's going on there. But um, let's look at our situation. Actually, we're going to go uh, here. We're going to go look at our developmental real quick. And uh, before we do that, let's look at our schedule. Of course, we have the Royal Rumble coming up next. Then it's going to be No Way Out. That's going to be a SmackDown branded pay-per-view. And then WrestleMania, which as I talked about in one of the previous videos here, um, I am probably going to find a way to make this a two-night event because I just, there's no way I'm going to be able to fit everything. As of right now, I was looking at it <laughs> yesterday. Um, I think I have, what is it? I think I have 12 matches that I have scheduled as of right now for WrestleMania. And that's, and there are people that have to be on the card that I don't even necessarily have a fully, I don't want to say I don't have a, a match for them, but like I haven't decided on what exactly that match is going to be. So that could involve, you know, person A versus person B, which could lead to person C versus D in another match. So this thing's going to be too big, to, I think, to have one night. So we're talking, 
you know, if I get this thing up to 15 matches or something, there's no way we're putting that in one night. So probably going to make that a two night event. Um, and we'll, we'll obviously figure that out pretty soon, but that's kind of where, um, you know, things stand on that. But all right, before we get into the popularity ratings, let's go look at our developmental. All right. So NXT, um, <laughs> we're going to look at this. Let's, uh, let's tour the company still to kind of give you an idea of who's still there and all that. Our top star, obviously still triple H. Which we'll get to in a second, which you guys are just going to have some fun with. Uh, Champa's still there, Karen Cross, Candice LeRae, um, and then Timothy Thatcher. So that's kind of your your overview of where things stand on that. Um, if we look at, I'm just laughing here. I don't think our, I don't know how much our size has changed at all. So NXT, yeah, continues to grow. Uh, it goes up from 54 when we started to a 60, pretty much there. Um, so popularity rising a bit. State of our NXT champions. Um, our NXT title holder is still vacant, which I don't know why this title became vacant. I have no idea when this would have happened. Why the, is Cross injured? Maybe I don't remember seeing any of this. Do, I don't. You guys remember? Like we would have seen this in an email or something, probably. I have no idea why the title's um, vacant, but my guess is <laughs> somehow Triple H is going to become the next NXT champion. I'm betting my money on that. We're going to look at our our um, our event schedule because I assume there's a takeover near the Rumble, right? So, I don't know. Uh, Santos Escobar, cruiserweight champion, he's had it for 44 days. So, I don't, like, I don't, again, I don't even think we looked at all this stuff last time. So, this is like, this is completely new to me. So, I'm like, oh, wow, this is great. Uh, all right. So, he's the champion. He's been there for 44 days. Thatcher's our North American champion who beat Bronson Reed, like, I don't remember any of this stuff. So um, that tells you I've not done a great job keeping tabs on NXT because if I had, Triple H wouldn't be running wild on everything. But um, ta new tag team champions, Danny Burch and Oni Loker, the, the new ch tag champs. I don't remember any of this. So, um, yeah, they must have won it on an episode of NXT. So we got a lot of title changes here, and apparently I'm just not – look, we've had a big December anyway, so don't don't blame me. Um, I just have not kept tabs on NXT because we've had so much going on in December, but apparently a lot's happened. Uh, we knew Candice LeRae was a champion because that's what we talked about her getting the belt off of Raquel Gonzalez for the call up. Uh, and then NXT women's champion. So apparently these two also won the tag team championships, um, Kat and Saro and Caden Carter. So man, we've had a lot of change, in NXT. but the biggest one of all is going to be that our NXT championship is vacant. And I guarantee you at the next takeover, there is going to be a new champion, and I am going to predict it right now. If you guys want my bowl prediction, which is going to be part of my awards for you guys, um, that you are you can leave in the comments for 2022, my bold prediction is Triple H is going to be the NXT champion. So um, let's look here. So what do we have event-wise? Well, no, so the next big event won't come until Vengeance Day. That's going to be um, in February. So, But still, I mean, we've had, some, I mean, we've had multiple title changes on the, the television program. So... Yeah, so somebody's going to be the champ here soon. I don't know why Karrion Cross lost the title. That's my only thing. Like, he's... Oh, never mind. He tore his rotator cuff. Did we talk about that? You guys are probably laughing at me right now. Like, maybe we did talk about that. I don't remember. Um, but, wow. Okay, so that's why he vacated the title. So he's probably out for... What? I mean, let's look at it here. Oh, yeah. That's right. So he's out. I mean, he's out a year. So, okay. Well, that's why the championship got vacated. Even... I mean, look, I'm, I'm terrible at remembering this stuff. This is why, again... I've had no, basically no eye on NXT aside from calling people up. And this is why Triple H is doing what he's doing. So, speaking of Triple H, let's look at his record to this point. Our friend Triple H is still, is now 19 0 0. Um, he still has not lost a match in NXT. He has beaten literally everyone in the promotion. So, he's just adding names to his list as he goes here. So him and Champa are just running wild. Apparently it's it's Champa now because Cross is injured. Um, so yeah, so Triple H still undefeated. My guess, my bold prediction, it's going to be Triple H beating. I don't know. Pick someone. Um, I think Triple H is going to beat. Maybe beats Champa. Maybe it's Triple H versus Champa for the NXT title. But as the owner and Booker, <laughs> the game is is playing the game right now. So Triple H future NXT. Title holder, my guess. Um, anything else we need to look at with NXT? We can look at the top 100s here. Um, you know, events. So we had a good event in November. Matches. 
Uh, okay, so, you know, we've had some good matches. That's not a surprise. Um, and nothing else really matters on there. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we need to sort of take a look at here. When it comes to NXT, I think that's probably the, the biggest stuff. Overall, I guess there's not really anything else um, going on. I mean, we can look at the... I mean, Pete Dunne and Kushida are in a feud, but everything else just kind of... It's just kind of there. Uh, we're all just waiting for the inevitable with Triple H to hold every title. So there's NXT and where things stand for that. All right, let's get into our popularity ratings and uh, let's look at the rosters uh, for Raw and SmackDown. Okay, Adam Cole, let's start with him. We're gonna, we filtered this by Raw, so we're gonna look at Raw first and we'll look at SmackDown. Um, Adam Cole, let's just see if we can figure this out. Like, how? How could he have no momentum? And you guys have probably a better explanation of this. I, I'm sure there's reasons why he he does not have, um, you know, why, why he maybe is in that spot. But his popularity's jumped up. I mean, we're talking 67 here, or 68 is the height. So he's almost at that 70 range. So he's made a big jump from December to January. I don't know how that's that means he lacks momentum, but um, <laughs> that's where he's at. AJ Styles, um, you know, his Bullet Club partner here, Styles had quite an interesting, you know, we kind of had that dip when everything started going backwards for him, but boy, he's made a jump back up. So he's at his highest point of 78. Now with that, um, you know, Garza's not really done anything. There's no reason to look at him right now as of yet. He's just now getting back into things. Dawkins, um, let's look at Dawkins here. I don't remember exactly where he kind of stands. Okay, so Dawkins is, he's in a decent spot uh, as part of the, you know, Street Profits and everything going on. Theory's not done enough. Bailey, uh, let's look at her here as Bailey. Yeah, so she kind of stays the same. But remember, I mean, it was weekend at, at Bailey's, right? Uh, for vacation, so she didn't really do a whole lot. Here we go. Now this is the big one, <laughs> big jump here for Becky Lynch. She, I think, as of now, has the highest ratings of anyone in the company. I could be wrong, but uh, we'll look at Reigns in a second. Now, why are we looking at the match history? Popularity. Um, I mean, this is <laughs> Becky with a big jump. From December to January, so she's almost to the 90 mark. Um, and, yeah, I mean, this is its just a huge jump. But she's had a, as we know, she's had a pretty eventful December, uh, getting to the May Young Classic Finals and, um, you know, everything with Roman Reigns. And, yeah, it's just a wild, wild month for her. Big E, 84. I want to say Big E has made, also made a pretty big jump here. Okay, so he jumped up a couple. I couldn't remember where it was in December. But Big E to 84, so he'll be to that light blue 85 mark. Soon enough. Um, damn it, Bobby Lashley still retired. Anyone else here? Oh, Cesaro. Uh, I think Cesaro's kind of stayed the same. You know, he really his big month came yeah a couple months ago, so he's really not jumped a whole lot in the recent months. Chad Gable, our friend here. We're trying to we're trying to make moves with Chad Gable. Uh, I think he's made a jump. Yeah. So finally, he's out of the 40s. He gets up to the 50 mark here. So slow but steady. For Gable making the move, uh, Christian. I mean, just so you know, Christian's here in the the mid 60s, uh, so cooled momentum for him. Daniel Bryan coming off of that big victory in the Triple Threat match to earn his championship, he hasn't gained any. He's just kind of stayed the same for a while. So uh, that's there. Um, anyone else here? That Dominic's not really interesting, I suppose. Edge, Edge. Look at Edge here. Um, he's made a little bit of a jump, I think. Yeah. So Edge is kind of all up a huge. Month for him, too. He did have that championship match against Montez Ford. There we go. Finn Balor. Look at this. This guy has jumped up to the upper 70s. And if you remember, I mean, this guy was like in the, yeah, like he was upper 60s, which wasn't too bad. But what? I mean, this is a jump here from December to January. What a month for Finn Balor. Had that singles win over Sheamus. And, of course, the Bullet Club stuff. They get the big win in the main event at Armageddon. But... I mean, Balor is almost to the 80 mark here. So Balor making his case for being one of the top stars uh, now. So that strengthens the Bullet Club. Io Shirai, just so you know, she's still out a while. Um, anyone else? None of these people are active. Uh, let's see. Johnny Gargano in the mid-50s. I don't really think he's changed all that much since coming up from NXT. So he gained a couple just from the interaction and match he had with Owens. And there is Owens right beside him. Owens also, uh, the light blue for him. I don't remember. I don't think he was in that last time. Yep. So Owens has made the jump up too. We got a lot of big stars in this company. And uh, I think we have, I mean, we have we have more people now for sure in this, this light blue 85 or, or higher than we've ever had to this point. Um, so we're doing something right there. 
Liv Morgan, who I talked about just from a rating standpoint, I mean, it's just, I don't know. I'm up and down on Liv Morgan. 47, she just hasn't, I mean, look, it's gone down a little bit, but as I've said before, I, I'm kind of in a, I don't want to say I'm stuck with what to do necessarily with Liv Morgan and Tony Storm because I've got a storyline for him, but um, yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I go back and forth on trying to figure out what to do necessarily with with Liv. But uh, Montez Ford, you know, a big month for him, and now he's up into the the upper 60s, so he he's almost at that 70 mark. You look at what we've done with Montez since this started. He's been one of our pushed, you know, stars to this point. People who have made their ascent started at a 50. Now he's all the way up to a 67, his highest point here, 68 in some spots. So we're almost to a 70 with Montez. So I think we've we've done a pretty good job getting him, you know, pushing him to that level we want him to be at. So uh, that's worth noting. I don't think much has changed with Ali, 54. Um, let's see who else. Uh, Omas hasn't done anything. He's been off for a while. Penta's at a mid 60s up here to 68 in uh, this spot. So Penta, you know, gained a little bit, but I mean, again, we, we talked about that when we brought him in, what was it? We, I think we brought him in in September. Uh, that would have been at, was that Unforgiven? Yeah. So, I mean, he's jumped up quite a bit since we brought him in from AEW and he was in the low fifties. So, um, again, he's almost at that 70 mark too. So we just, we've got a lot of people heading in the right direction. Orton, I promise you is the only person in our entire save, I think. That has not changed a single bit since the start. He's just at an 80. Like this guy, everything we've done, he's just stayed at an 80, no matter what. So uh, he is just, yeah, he is just even. Randy Orton. Ray Phoenix has jumped into the 70s here. I think that's a first. Um, Yeah, so he's made a big jump. Someone else, of course, with Penta. We brought in, he's jumped up about 14, 15 spots here since we brought him in from AEW. Uh, Ray, poor Ray has uh, just kind of been, he's not really been in the the best of spots. (laughs) I'm sorry to Ray Mysterio. Clearly, I booked him into oblivion here uh, as he he is at his lowest point. So Ray's probably been the guy who's gone in the complete opposite direction, but we do have a storyline going on with him. Rhea Ripley, look at this. 76s, and I know you probably don't remember where she was before, but easily (laughs) our biggest jump of anyone in a single month in this entire save uh, and I mean, she wins the Megan Classic. Think about all the people she beat along the way: um, Baszler, Banks, Gonzalez, Becky. Those four huge wins, and she just makes a huge jump here by winning the Megan Classic. I mean, this is just astronomical in terms of the jump she's made. So, I mean, just an unbelievable month for Rhea Ripley for sure. And so now she's almost to that 80 mark. Pretty incredible stuff there. Uh, Banks is low 70s. I assume Sasha's gone down a little bit. Okay, so she, she's she gone up a little bit. Stayed the same. That's fine. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so that's fine for her. Sheamus, I think Sheamus has probably gone down a little bit. He lost that match to Balor. Yeah, so Sheamus goes down from his highest point down to 73, which is fine. Uh, Tony Storm, the only other one, you know, I think hers has probably gone down too since they, I mean, it's, you know, it's still, it's fine. So, all right, that's Raw. Let's look at the SmackDown uh, brand here, and we will uh, filter this by SmackDown. And let's see, SmackDown, and let's look at our group here on SmackDown, which, um, you know, I think this is another interesting group as I'm looking down the roster here to make sure that I'm not spoiling anything, (laughs) making sure I don't have anyone on here that uh, is going to be new to you guys, a new addition, new signee. Okay, there's no one there. All right, Aleister Black, 61 here, Um, you know, he's gone up a little bit. Uh, Asuka, Asuka, I think, is, has gone up a bit now that I look at it. Yeah, so Asuka had a pretty big month, too. Even though she lost in that first round of the Megan Classic, um, still, Asuka with a big month. So, you know, she was in that really good match with Becky, so that probably helped. Um, Bianca, I think Bianca's probably stayed about the same. She hasn't really moved a whole lot in recent months, but, yeah, so she goes down one, but that's okay. Uh, Bray at a 79 here, I think that's, yeah, that's about the same. Uh, let's see, Charlotte, I mean, look, Charlotte's popularity is probably about the same, but I keep telling you guys why I have not used Charlotte as much, because she has that, um, what is it, in a funk, so because she is in a funk, and, you know, something that just, it, it's going to give a penalty every single time she wrestles, 
And so between three months and two years, like we said, we're six months, what, six, seven months into the save. So this thing could go for two years. And I'm just, I hate having the penalties with everything she's in. So that's why she's kind of, she's been up and down in terms of how we've used her. Uh, Dakota Kai, she's had a very eventful month. And so, but it really hasn't done a whole lot in terms of popularity. Um, so I don't, that's not ideal, but you know, we still obviously have plans for her. Uh, Damien Priest, our other person, probably including Montez and some of the others that have, you know, kind of his bigger jump, as we know, was from October, November, because that's when he teamed with the Rocket No Mercy uh, and got that win in the main event there. But not a lot's changed since then. I don't, I wouldn't say it's a cooling off point for Damien Priest, but I would say it's a little bit of a, I don't want to say holding pattern either, because now he's jumped into the Drew McIntyre, Bray Wyatt, Oscar Black storyline, and he's definitely going to be involved with some stuff we have there. So, um, you know, we're fine. We're fine with that. I mean, this guy was in the 40s when we started the save. So it's okay if he has a couple months where he's not gaining a huge ground. McIntyre has made a jump here. He's gone, you know, all blue here to the top. He's made a little little bit of a, you know, one up there. That's fine. We'll take that. Um, let's see, Jeff as Jeff's, I think Jeff's gone up because he's now, you know, tag team champion here. So, wow, what a month for Jeff, huh? Jeff wins a tag team championship and he gets a big boost. Let's see if that happens for Ricochet. Probably not because Ricochet just, let's be honest. I mean, no one in our state likes that guy. Um, yeah, Jeff. Wow. Up to 71. I didn't realize that. Usos, um, Jay continues to, let's see. I think Jay's probably higher popularity than Jimmy. He's kind of stayed the same. So, yeah, I mean, they... They haven't wrestled a whole lot this past month, I guess is probably the thing. They've been more storyline-driven. So, But both of them in the 70s now, so that's good to see. John Cena, uh, 86s across the board. I don't think that's changed a whole lot. Um, Keith Lee, our Intercontinental Champion. Look at our popularity here for Keith Lee. So he continues to head in the right direction, uh, and he will certainly have a, a very notable uh, storyline coming up soon. So for anyone who thought that Keith Lee was kind of not doing a whole lot, uh, just wait. Kofi Kingston, I don't, I mean, look, New Day's also been a team. They lose the championships, but Kofi heading in the right direction. Mandy Rose, still in the low 40s, but let's remember, um, <laughs> I mean, let's be honest here. Mandy Rose has has lost a lot of matches, in case you didn't realize it. I don't know if you guys realize this necessarily, but we kind of been jobbing Mandy out uh, this whole series to this point, but sorry. Sorry to Mandy Rose fans. She is 1-14 as a record here. Um, but uh, as you know, that that will change now that she's involved in a much bigger storyline. She's not a dropper anymore. So Paige, 57 uh, for this. Uh, so yeah, I mean, Paige is kind of there with that. I don't know. Cayman's important because he's in a lot of segments too. And I don't guess he's changed a whole lot though. Raquel's one that's, you know, she had a big Mayan Classic. And wow, okay, so forget what I said about Rhea Ripley, which I think they're about the same. I think Rhea jumped from 59 to 76. Raquel jumps from the upper 30s to the mid-50s. Wow, I did not realize that. So that's good. Um, We certainly needed that because we've been pushing Raquel. Great momentum here for her, so that's good to see on that. Oh, do we really have to go to Ricochet? Jeez, man. All right, we have to look at Ricochet here. And what do you know? This guy wins the tag team championships, and he gains no popularity. He is just stuck. Like he, uh, Ricochet is going to be Mister Forty Two here because he's not going anywhere. He's a he's a tag team champion. We got a belt on this guy. Oh, Ricochet. I hope I will Steve Austin sent another email about not liking Ricochet. Roman Reigns. So he and Becky Lynch are pretty much even when you look at the popularity to this point. Reigns had a big jump from December to January. Um, I mean, look, he, he beats The Rock at, at Survivor Series. He doesn't really get much of a bump at all, but he makes a big jump from December to January. That is, of course, because of us getting out of that cooling off period, finally getting back into, um, you know, good graces there. So that's kind of helped his popularity rise a bit. Sammy, um, let's see. Sammy's kind of stayed the same, I think. So that's uh, interesting there. Joe, we haven't really... We have a big storyline coming up for Joe, but he's kind of been, you know, someone that's also kind of been in the holding pattern. Seth, all 80s for Seth. I don't know how that's changed, uh, but again, Seth has not wrestled a ton, so he's kind of stayed there. Anyone else here? The Miz. Um, I think The Miz has kind of stayed to 70 for that. So, uh, all right, there you go. So there's a look at the popularity ratings uh, for those. I know, you know, some people may not love going through every single wrestler and looking at how much they jumped up a point or something, but it is notable because 
you know, we book this stuff, you see what's going on on the screen in terms of the ratings for the matches and the angles and stuff, but you don't necessarily see how it's affecting popularity. So we do do that in every single state of WWE. Um, all right, let's get to the fun stuff. We'll wrap up with the awards, and uh, I'm going to give you guys your own awards after we do this. All right, Wrestler of the Year, Kazuchika Okada, as we sort of spoiled in the last one because it was inevitable, because that's where it's kind of, you know, it starts, and I can't hide it. But I said I was not going to look at any of these others, and I promise you I have not looked at any of these uh, since I, you know, recorded Armageddon. Um, So Kazuchika Okada uh, is your Wrestler of the Year, and if we look at Okada, uh, his match history here for the year, my goodness, this guy, <laughs> this is incredible. Like, but because we know it's a different style, right? Like he's working in Japan. Oh my goodness. Naito and Okada had a 98 match power struggle. I don't think we ever looked at that in terms of the, um, looking at, you know, as we, as we went along in the save, there, we, we wouldn't have because I would have remembered this, but wow. Okada with 59 wins, three losses since we started this save. I mean, this is just an incredible string of, and look at this. No matches for Okada. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking through here. Like, I want to make sure. This guy has not had a... Oh, he's had one. He, he, so he teamed with the Dark Order on Dynamite. <laughs> oh, my. Come on, TK. What are you doing? You bring in Okada to put him on Dynamite, and you team him with the Dark Order to beat Scorpio Sky and SCU. Wow. There's got to be a bigger match for Okada there. Um, but anyways, I mean, this is... Well, we know what the match of the year is, right? <laughs> there, spoiler, it's going to be Okada and Naito uh, at, at Power Struggle. There's zero doubt about that. But my goodness, this guy's wrestled 62 times since we started the save. I mean, a 98 average rating with an 80. So bow down to Okada because he is rightfully the wrestler of the year. No one in my company is touching that. So there you go. Congratulations to Okada. Company of the year, there we go. We will gladly step up and gain our award for this one. There was zero doubt who was going to be the company of the year. Uh, we are just, we are incredible. What else do we say? All right, tag team of the year. Going to be, uh, okay, so this is going to, we're going to go here to AAA or CMLL. Um, I don't, I mean, I, I'm curious how this is a tag team of the year because let's be honest, how many matches have they have? Um, I mean, look, at not that many, so... I don't know why necessarily they're the tag team of the year, um, but I, I don't know. What, whatever, I guess. Um, I should, well, I mean, then again, I mean, let's be honest. Like, I guess no one really has stood out necessarily in our our tag team division to this point. I, I I wouldn't have. I don't know if I could have argued a whole lot with other teams, but I'm surprised that it's a team that only had what was it seven matches or eight matches. But it's fine. I get it. it it's okay. Match of the year, as we said, there's no doubt about that. Um, Okada Naito. 98. No one's touching that. Show of the year also are going to be Dominion. So what was... um? Let's look at Dominion for this. Uh, I wonder if we can find Dominion here. My goodness, we're going to have to go through. <laughs> it's got to be somewhere. I don't remember what Dominion was. It would it be what? Ju- down here somewhere? Okay, so all the way back here. Dominion got an 89. So I guess we haven't had a show that's gotten an 89. I think we got it. Would we get an 88 on something maybe? So, yeah, Okada beating Naito at Dominion 2. So they had a 94 there. My goodness. These guys are something. Um, so there you go. That's why. I mean, look, that's uh, that that's it. So T- Tanahashi beat Minoru Suzuki for the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. Is, is Tanahashi the champion there? I don't know. But, all right, so that makes sense. Anything led by Okada and Naito is going to get show of the year. Young Wrestler of the Year. Um, okay, Vikingo. He's your, your Young Wrestler of the Year. I could I could see that. Um, that's a good choice because he's only 24 and so let's see. So nine wins, 12 losses, had, had a lot of good matches. So I can't ignore that. Uh, that is a uh, Vikingo getting your, your young wrestler of the year, veteran wrestler of the year, uh, chess man, triple <laughs> a, uh, I remember chess man. I remember watching triple a back in the day and, uh, chess man was always on there. My goodness, chess man putting up some matches too here. So maybe we need to hire chess man. Uh, what do you think? Let me know what you think in the comments. Chess man. WWE. Female wrestler Becky Lynch, of course. Um, third time she's won this award. But, uh, I mean, she's had a hell of a year, I think. And, uh, I mean, we look at the match history for her. Not a lot of matches, but um, she's had a pretty good year. And she won the May Young Classic. Maybe she gets even more of a bump. But in terms of popularity, like we said, she's even out outdoing Roman Reigns in some areas. So, independent wrestler of the year, um, Nakajima. 
gets that one. And uh, so let's see what he's done this year. Uh, match history, good matches working for Noah there. Congratulations to him. Manager of the year. Are you kidding me, Gato? No way. There's no way Gato should be the manager of the year. Paul Heyman is the manager of the year without any doubt whatsoever. Gato. Gato should not be the manager of the year. Get back to booking Okada and Naito in your main events to steal these awards. It's not fair. He should not be the manager of the year. So, not happening. Announcer of the year. Um, okay, I mean, look, New Japan is racking up here, but let's be honest. They, they've had... Great shows. They've had, I mean, great matches. So I I guess I can't really, you know, be upset with this. I didn't think Michael Cole would get it anyways. But color commentator, uh, good Nigel. Who is Nigel working for? Uh, oh, that's right. He's in NXT still. I forgot. I was like, okay, so as of our save, Nigel is still in NXT. So that makes sense. So there you go. Nigel, congratulations to him. NXT racking up an award here. Referee of the year, Bryce Rimsburg. Oh, no way. No way. It's It's got to be like Charles Robinson or Mike Chioda or someone like that. Bryce Rimsburg, get out of here. Has he had a match? Has he wrestled anyone? I don't think so. I'm going to put someone, I'm going to put one of our referees in a match. That way they can um, get this award next year. I'm just kidding. We're not going to have that. Uh, all right. So there you go. There's your, your big awards there. Uh, I know that was kind of anticlimactic, but um, you know, congratulations to everyone involved. And uh, we'll see if there, was there anything else that we, any of these others we did not look at. Uh, I mean, female wrestler of the year was Becky. Now we looked at all these. Most improved company, no winner. So we didn't have any winners. No one improved. I think we improved. Um, card of the year, that was the main. Okay, so I guess that's there. Um, yeah, okay, so everything's set there. So, all right, well, there's your awards now. Okay, now it's the Power 500. Who got number one? Okada, of course. There's no surprise here, right? There's zero doubt um, that Okada was going to get number one. Naito at two, um, which, again, given the matches these two had, 98, 94, huge. Andrade at three. Andrade at number three. Wow, jumps up from from number 30 in the, the year before to number three. Andrade, look at that. But he, I mean, Andrade, hell of a, ma- hell of a, hell of a year for Andrade here because... He had a lot of good matches, so we shouldn't have let Andrade go. Um, Shingo at four. I love Shingo. I, I, I'd i love to bring Shingo to WWE. Psycho Clown at five, so AAA on the board here again. Uh, wow, what happened here? <laughs> how, how does this guy go from a 37 to an 85? Wow, that's quite a, quite a range. Jay White at six. Um, good year for Jay White, so he's there. He continues to make the jump up. Uh, Kenta at seven. Uh, good year for Kenta. Let's see. Um, Moxley at 11. So that's worth noting as, I mean, Mox, Moxley had a good year too. Uh, chess man. I'm telling you, chess man. He's a guy. Roosh is there. Ishii is, uh, there as well. Who is anyone on our list? I mean, is any of our people going to make this list anywhere? Uh, Brian Danielson, he's down here. Kenny Omega there at 16. Uh, Omega, he had some pretty good matches. So, um, yeah, Andrade and Omega. So that that's a good, that's his best match. So, looking down the list here, Abushi's there, Minoru Suzuki, a lot of New Japan guys here. But our first guy on the list is going to be uh, Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, at number twenty-eight. So at least he jumps up from the year before. But we would have loved him to be a lot higher on this list. Um, you know, he had a lot of good matches, but I'd like him to hit. I think he's going to hit the next level this year. So. Brian Danielson could be a front runner for rest of the year going into next year. Um, I guess we what we could do here is we could we could filter it by company. I was just kind of looking at the top people just to give you an idea, but uh, we'll go ahead and filter this by company. So Danielson at 28, Ray Phoenix at 33, um, which you know a lot of his matches did come before I guess uh, he got to WWE. But um, Cesaro at 38, so a good year for Cesaro. Uh, Kevin Owens, uh, I, w- I would have liked Owens to be a little bit higher, but that's okay. Uh, Penta, Styles, so these guys, Sheamus, Big E, Seth, Edge, Damian Priest. Look at Damian Priest. Take that, Triple H. Damian Priest outdoing Triple H here. <clears throat> Triple H, unbelievable. This guy, I just I can't get over it. Uh, Adam Cole, John Cena, 
and uh, McIntyre make the top 100. So, so there you go. There's a look at uh, the people on the top 100 list for the year 2021, or the Power 500, excuse me, uh, for the year. And um, so that's where things stand with that. But as I mentioned before we wrap up, I want you guys to leave your own awards. So what I'm going to do in the comment section, I'm going to pin a comment, and it's going to have several different awards. Now, keep in mind, these are just based on your enjoyment of the series, not necessarily looking at ratings and all this other stuff. And that's why I'm going to label them as favorite wrestler and so forth, because what have you enjoyed the most? Not necessarily who you think should be the wrestler of the year, anything like that. But we're going to leave several different ones. Your favorite wrestler. So who's been your favorite person to watch, you know, listen to, whatever, throughout this series thus far? Um, who's been kind of your favorite in the series? Uh, also, you know, your favorite match. Has there been a match that stood out? And again, you don't have to necessarily go with ratings, just from your standpoint, like what has been your favorite to this point? You know, hopefully you don't have to go back too far to remember that, but pick one of your favorite matches. Uh, we can go with that. Um, also your favorite show, you know, has there been a show in particular that's been your favorite? Um, there's pretty self-explanatory on that. Your favorite storyline. So is there one storyline that's really jumped out above the rest? Um, pick your favorite for that one. And also we're going to do your 2022 bold prediction. So I want you to give me your biggest prediction. You can do one, you can do multiple your biggest predictions for 2022. What are your bold predictions for the WWE in 2022? Those are the five categories that I'm going to leave in the comments. And I want you guys to give me your thoughts. Let's get Bryce Rimsburg off the, off the damn screen here. Um, I want you guys to, to give me your thoughts on uh, what you have thought about the series thus far. And if there are any other categories you want to leave, I'm just, I'm not creative enough to come up with any other great categories. So those are the five I'm going to leave there, but uh, any other categories you want to come up with, throw them in there. I'd love to hear your awards. Um, so copy and paste that, plug in your answers, and uh, I, I can't wait to see what you guys are going to give me on this one because I, I I hope there's a variety of answers just based on how we booked thus far. A lot of different people hopefully have been interesting, hopefully a lot of storylines, a lot of interesting characters. So, um, yeah, so I, I'm really looking forward to your responses. Like, I really am. Like, I'm just I'm very excited to, to see what you have thought. At this point, who your favorite wrestlers have been maybe in the series, your, your favorite storylines, all that. So, um, yeah, be sure to leave that in the comments. And uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And um, on the next episode, uh, it will be Raw. And I will go ahead and tell you, this is going to be a must-see edition of Raw. I kind of teased it in the community post I did. I called it a huge Raw this is going to be a huge Raw. So um, we are going to start out the year with a bang uh, in a very significant episode of uh, WWE Raw on the next episode. And uh, as I said as well, I know it's been you know probably about a week or more now since we've had our last AW or WCW videos, but usually when we get to this point, you know we really try to just go from pay-per-view preview, pay-per-view state of. Like that's how we've done our WWE save. It's kind of the flagship save as we know here on the channel. Uh, it's the one that got everything started. So we once we, you know, I, I try to get those three videos specifically done and kind of spread those out a little bit, and then we'll jump back into the other series. So that's how we usually do it. So I know it's been a little bit of a break from AW, WCW. If you're following just for those, um, fear not. I'm working on those, but uh, this is just how we do it. We try to, because this is kind of our, our biggest part each month for WWE series is, you know, we have our pay-per-view preview, our pay-per-view and then we have our state up. So um, kind of a fun time for the, the WWE series followers. So uh, that's how we do it. But on the next episode of the WWE 2022 save, it is going to be a must-see Raw for January week one.